Grab the leg is here, and it's honestly really surprising. Intel is back in the game. We had the opportunity to check out the latest Intel Core i5-13600K and the Intel Core i9-13900K, and the results are pretty phenomenal. The new Core i5-13600K is going to grow right up against the Ryzen 5 7600X, and despite costing a little more, there might be a sizable performance advantage. And as for the Core i9-13900K against the Ryzen 9 7950X, it's the other way around. It costs less, yet performs equally as good. With all that said, let's get into things. In the world of PCs, there are basically two giants constantly competing. Now we've already taken a look at what AMD has to offer, and although there were some hiccups here and there, it was a really great experience overall. Now if you'd like to check out our full review of the Ryzen 7000 series, do click on the link up above in the corner or in the description down below. But today, let's talk about Intel, and as mentioned, we have both the Core i5-13600K and the Core i9-13900K. First thing to note, and it came as quite a surprise, is that Intel is now actually offering more cores, skill for skill, as compared to AMD. The tables have kind of flipped. The Ryzen 5 7600X retains 6 cores and 12 threads as it was in the previous generation, but the Core i5-13600K now actually offers a total of 14 cores and 20 threads. The same is true for the flagship products. The Ryzen 9 7950X still has 16 cores and 32 threads, while the Core i9-13900K has a total of 24 cores and 32 threads. Now obviously, Intel has the performance and efficiency core architecture or the core design, which AMD doesn't really have. So in a sense, it's not really an apples to apples comparison, but in the whole scheme of things, Intel is actually offering more cores than AMD right now, which is kind of ironic in a way. But regardless, just like with Ryzen 7000 series, there's just too much to cover with 13th gen on Intel. So we're just going to focus on a few main things, mainly performance, efficiency and thermals, and ultimately value, especially if you are a gamer or perhaps a content creator. Once again, I do have to thank Zhu Cheng from Tech Revolutionist here in Singapore for helping us out by providing some of the parts listed, especially with the test bench itself and the GPU. On that note, the rest of the parts have actually been provided by ASUS and we are talking some serious gear here. For the motherboard, it's all the bells and whistles with the ROG Maximus Z790 Extreme, and this is paired with the ROG Strix LC2 360 AIO, 32 gigs of Kingston Fury DDR5 RAM running at 6000 mega transfers per second, and we even have ROG's very own NVMe Gen 4x4 SSD with the ROG Strix SQ7. This is a pretty beefy setup, and yes, it's kind of overkill in many places. The average user probably wouldn't opt for this motherboard, but we wanted to keep it as fair as we could as compared to the Ryzen 7000 series, so this is what we have and this is what we are working with. So here's the entire list at a glance with our Intel setup, as well as the Ryzen setup we had before. For all testing, they were done on this open-air test bench in a room with an ambient temperature of about 24 degrees Celsius, as for the Strix AIO, the turbo profile was used via Armory Crate, which sets all three fans to 2000 to 2200 RPM thereabouts and a pump running just shy of 3000 RPM. So with that all of the way, let's dive into the performance and testings and see what Intel is all about. First up are the creative and synthetic benchmarks as usual, starting with Cinebench R20. For the Core i5-13600K, it managed a score of 9067 and 767 respectively. In comparison to the Ryzen 5 7600X, this is quite the performance uplift, almost 50% when it comes to multi-core performance. As for the Core i9-13900K, it managed a score of 15108 and 845 respectively, which does put it quite a fair bit ahead of the 7900X and even just slightly ahead of the Ryzen 9 7950X. This is probably the start of a trend that you're going to see and it's worthy to take note of, but we will also touch on thermals and efficiency later on and that will give you a much better idea. We move on to Cinebench R23, and the Core i5-13600K scored 23,632 and just shy of 2,000 in multi-core and single-core respectively. In comparison to the Ryzen 5 7600X yet again, 
multi-core performance is much better on Team Blue, while single-core performance is pretty similar. As for the Core i9 13900K, it managed to score of 38,866 and 2,216 respectively, which is much faster than the Ryzen 9 7900X and extremely comparable to the Ryzen 9 7950X. We then ran a couple of tests on Blender for both the BMW scene and a slightly more demanding classroom scene. The Core i5-13600K managed to complete the BMW render in just about 1 minute and 38 seconds, while the classroom render took about 3 minutes and 54 seconds. Again, compared to the Ryzen 5 7600X, the Intel chip is way faster, and almost 1 minute faster for the BMW scene and almost 2 minutes faster for the classroom scene. The 14 core setup might just be really helping out here against what might now be just a mere 6 cores. As for the Core i9-13900K, it managed to complete the BMW scene in just under a minute and the classroom scene took 2 minutes and 17 seconds. Yet again, much faster as compared to the Ryzen 9 7900X and very comparable to the Ryzen 9 7950X. Next up, we have a couple of 3D Mark tests starting with Fire Strike. The Core i5-13600K managed a score of 37,194, while the Core i9-13900K managed a score of about 36,667. Now to take note, just like with our Ryzen testing, our scores are necessarily the best achievable out there, as we only have the Radeon RX 6800 available for testing. But this should still give a good reference point as to where the chips stand, especially in comparison to the Ryzen 7000 series which perform pretty much equally. Now let's talk gaming, and just like the Ryzen 5 7600X, this is probably where the Core i5 13600K really shines and shows its true value. Now in most scenarios, the Core i5 13600K performs comparably to the Ryzen 5 7600X and even to the Core i9 13900K or the Ryzen 9 7900X. And this holds true no matter the resolution, be it at 1080p, 1440p or even 4K. However, there are two outliers, and that is for CSGO and Halo Infinite. In CSGO, the Core i9-13900K achieves better frame rates on average as compared to the Core i5-13600K. But surprisingly, it's the other way around for Halo Infinite, with the Core i5-13600K managing much higher frame rates as compared to the Core i9-13900K. We believe that this is very likely due to the nature of the highest single core boost frequency of 5.8 GHz for the Core i9 versus 5.1 for the Core i5 when it comes to CSGO. Though as for Halo Infinite, we aren't really sure at the moment. We ran it numerous times on both chips and these were indeed the results. We definitely want to dive deeper and find out more. In any case however, gaming performance across the board, no matter if you go with the Core i5 or the Core i9, is going to give you a fantastic experience. So that's pretty much all the performance testing in a nutshell. And not surprisingly, the Core i5 13600K was actually the most, well, unique of the bunch. Not only is it going to be great for gaming, but compared to the Ryzen 5 7600X, it's proving to be a really capable chip for content creators as well. And in fact, if you take a look at the graphs, it puts it much closer to the Ryzen 9 7900X as compared to the Ryzen 5 7600X. And to that end, we can only say that it's really commendable to say the least. But of course, there's a catch. There always is a catch. Now we are talking about thermals and efficiency here, and the Intel chips definitely do draw quite a lot more power. Now for Intel, the chips have a processor base power and turbo boost power. Now both the Core i5-13600K and the Core i9-13900K has a processor base power rated for 125 watts. The difference lies in the turbo boost power, in which the Core i5 can hit up to 181 watts, while the Core i9 can reach a staggering 253 watts. In comparison to AMD which has a 105 watt base and 142 watt boost for the Ryzen 5 7600X, and 170 watt base and 230 watt boost for the Ryzen 9 7900X, this is actually quite the difference in power, especially for the 9 series tier of chips. Taking Cinebench R23 as an example scenario, the Core i5-13600K will sustain 4.6 GHz on all cores, maintain a temperature of about 70 degrees Celsius while consuming up to 150 watts of power. In contrast to the Ryzen 5 6600X, which will sustain 5.2 GHz on all cores, maintain a temperature of about 88 degrees Celsius while consuming about just 90 watts of power. 
While it does have quite a few more cores in comparison, the Core i5-13600K is also really just drawing quite a lot more power, though surprisingly a lower temperature. On the other front, the Core i9-13900K was sustained 4.7GHz and maintained 88 degrees Celsius while consuming 250 watts for the most part. But it's also interesting to note that for the first 3 minutes of almost any sustained workload, the Core i9-13900K was actually able to draw up to 300 watts of power, pushing nearly 5 GHz while maintaining a temperature of about 97 degrees Celsius. But all that we've just shared are really only based on sustained workloads on professional applications. If you're just strictly gaming, temperatures are well under control with little to no concern at all, so no worries on that front. With all that said, it might now not be that surprising that both the Intel chips are performing at least comparable or better than their team rate counterparts. We have to say that things are shaping up to be really interesting, especially when you consider the industry at large. Now Intel is still being, well, Intel. They are still really power hungry, but they now offer as much performance or even better compared to the Ryzen offerings from AMD. And ironically, Intel is now actually the one offering more cores as compared to AMD. That we have AMD to thank for. We then talk about price. At the top end, we have the Core i9-13900K, which will retail for about 589 US dollars, while the Ryzen 9 7950X that's already in the market will retail for just shy of 700 US dollars. Depending on the use case, it might be an easy or tough decision. While the Core i9-13900K does perform comparably for much less, it does draw a lot more power. To put things into perspective, if you pair a Core i9-13900K with an RTX 4090, which can theoretically draw up to 600 watts of power, that's 900 watts just for the CPU and GPU alone. You will probably need at least a 1200 watt PSU at that point to run things comfortably. While as for the Ryzen 9 7950X, not only will it consume less power, but thanks to AMD's innovative way for reducing skills by introducing Eco Mode, you can get creative with various builds and possibilities while still getting really good performance. But putting the flagships aside, let's talk about a more interesting comparison. The Core i5-13600K and the Ryzen 5 7600X. These are chips that are targeted towards a market that is much more saturated and definitely appeals to the wider audience. So, which is it? If we were to talk about pricing, the Core i5-13600K will retail for $329 US while the Ryzen 5 7600X is already retailing for $299 US dollars. This is the opposite relationship as compared to the flagships. In our opinion, it comes down to where you're coming from. If you're looking to build a new PC and you're talking strictly about gaming, either of them is going to be fine, but you do have to note by, by going with Ryzen, you will have to get DDR5 RAM, which may or may not offset the cost saving by going with it. On the other hand, if you're upgrading for an old system, especially if you're coming from Intel. Well, we would say that the best option is to actually go with the Core i5-13600K. And for that, a few reasons. DDR4 will still be supported, unlike on Ryzen, which means you get to reuse your RAM, saving you some bucks there, and coolers will also still be 100% compatible, unlike with AM5, which is a hit or a miss. But most importantly, current generation motherboards will also support the new 13th gen, which means you can save more as well if you're on it, or you can just buy this generation while the new one launches and save yet more. As for creatives and professionals working with a tight budget, definitely just go with Team Blue. This is a no-brainer. The Core i5-13600K just offers that much more performance as compared to the Ryzen 5 7600X. So that is definitely the chip to go for. Regarding the flagships on the other hand, it might actually depend on what other kind of components you're working with. Ultimately, we would say this, if power and efficiency is of concern, go with the Ryzen 9 7950X, and if it isn't, the Core i9-13900K is going to be a powerful choice. In any case, we're actually far more impressed than we thought we would with what Intel has to offer this generation, especially when we've really seen what the competition has to offer. All we can say is that competition is always welcome because that means that there will actually be innovation and that just makes it better for us as consumers. Again, it's kind of funny to think that Intel is now actually the one to offer more cores. We definitely have AMD to thank for that. In any case, that was a slightly in-depth look at what Intel 13th Gen Raptor Lake has to offer. We hope we've provided you with a little bit of insight and perhaps helped you with your purchase decision. 
Again, we are really impressed with, well, especially that Core i5. It definitely blew us away and kind of surprised us in more ways than one. And, well, 13th gen might shape up to be my next upgrade. Who knows? In any case, if you'd like to see more of such content, do definitely stay subscribed and hit that notification bell to know when our uploads go live. That's really important. And other than that, definitely do follow us on our social channels such as Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. Till the next one. See ya.